My name is Sean McGaffick, and I'll be the presenter for uh, today's SIG. Stop creating inefficient models. It's time to learn the power of parametric modeling. We'll cover a, a whole couple of uh, different things here today. Um, we'll discuss the way that we work, uh, implementing kind of new ways of working, using the parametric modeling and adding them to our workflows. Too much with PowerPoints, but I wanted to kind of start off with just talk a little bit about parametric modeling, uh, the design intent and constraints. So first off, um, these, you know, parametric modeling, the design intent, uh, capturing that, that those rules that go along with the geometry and applying constraints, um, certainly uh, make your parametric models a, a lot more flexible. And as I had mentioned uh, before, uh, they certainly, uh, the design intent helps us capture the behavior of that design. So in other words, we have a change that we need to make on uh, on something in MicroStation, a model. That change, which is the input, and then there's a corresponding output, how we want that model to react. All of that behavior can be stored directly in the model itself. So one of the things that we need to start talking about, first off, is saving that behavior and how those constraints uh, dimensionally and geometrically are, are, um, are related uh, together at, uh, to the model itself. So even a simple profile like what you might see here just on the slide uh, can allow lots of different ways of constraining it. So let me jump out of the uh, PowerPoint here and let's just jump right into, into MicroStation. So same geometry. Let's take a look at some of the geometry here and we'll talk a little bit about what you saw on the slide. On the slide just a second ago, there was a little pencil drawing. And we've been asked to make a change to this geometry. And now there's three pieces of geometry, so you can just get a chance to, to see how, uh, when this is built, the design intent can be captured with it. So we have a little change. This slot that we see here, that's drawn across all three of these, we need to change the depth of that. We just need to change it by a half a unit. And again, you know, just as we've done in, in you know, many versions of MicroStation, we could select the geometry. When we select the geometry uh, in the MicroStation Connect Edition, we have in our properties what appears as a feature tree. You can see right down in here, I have a cut. This is the profile that it was originally started with. And then that profile was extruded. If we were to take a look, there's our profile, which is what we started with. It was extruded. There was a cut placed on it. So how hard would that be for us to make that little change? You know, a half a unit, just bring that, that little cut down. Well, if I go ahead and select it, and I pick, if I would click the right one, there we go, the uh, profile itself, I can just grab one of the handles and select it and say, well, all right, we're going to come down a, a half a unit. So not a real difficult change. I won't do both of these, but just so you can get a chance to see the same thing, if I was to come in here and if I was to select that uh, cut that was here and come down a half a unit, these two react the same way. Now that's great, but what if the change was something a little more difficult. So for example, we just did this little change, which was just move that bottom down a half a unit. What if it was something like this? We said, okay, what we wanna do is to take that cut that was there, and instead of it going all the way through the geometry, we want it to go three quarters of a unit in this direction, and then we wanna stop it and have a wall that is 0.25 behind it, okay? So if we go back to MicroStation, let's, let's try that. So we take a look at, this first one, we say, all right, let's go ahead and do that. How would we, you know, go? How would we go about doing that? Well, this one started off as a a profile, and okay, could I modify the profile? No. Well, I, I'll give you a hint here. It would it be possible to uh, fix or correct this particular piece of geometry? Not really. What I'd end up having to do is to take that original profile that we started off with. I'd have to copy it. I'd have to extrude that out, 0.75. I'd have to then copy it again and uh, extrude that out, 0.25. And then using some of our Boolean tools, and trust me, I'm leaving out some detail here, the Boolean tools uh, to create a union between them. So what should be a change of just a few seconds really would be a few minutes. And this is a very simple change, right? So let's take a look at one of these other pieces of geometry. How difficult would that be? 
Well, if I go ahead and select it and I was to pick the cut that was here, and let me select it. There we go. And I'll go to edit feature. And I did that kind of fast. Let me just show you that. Is that one of the things that we have is you saw the feature tree just a second ago, is that each one of those features that's placed on that solid, uh, parametric solid, is that I can come in and edit that feature. So this was originally drawn. This cut was originally placed, so it went all the way through the geometry. Here I could say, let's make that change to 0.75. We could tie it to a variable, and I'll show you that in just one second, and click OK. Literally just, what, two clicks, three clicks, it's done. Not so easy on this one over here. Same thing over here. I could select it. I could pick the, the cut, edit feature, make that change. Define depth, 0.75, click OK, and it's done. Okay. Again, going back to this one, a lot more rework for it. All right, that all, that all said, consider one other change. What if I decided what I need to do is to change the, the, uh, the fillet that's here on the shoulders of our little part? So I need to change that. Uh, to say one now, I need to make it 0.25, or maybe I need to get rid of it, that kind of thing. Well, if we take a look at the geometry, while it looks exactly the same, on the screen, it reacts much differently. What we see on the right-hand side, I can select, and you'll see there's, well, actually, let's just kind of wander through this. We originally started with a slab. That slab that you see over here in the feature tree was originally drawn. There was cuts that were placed on it, and each one of those cuts I could modify or remove. And you'll take a look at the two fillets that are here. Those two fillets I can select hit the little glyph that's here, and I could edit it to make a change. So, for example, let's say I decided that that needs to be 0.75. I can change that to 0.75. I come over here, and maybe I want to get rid of this one. I'll say let's just delete that one. They're independent of one another. Both shoulders are independent. They both have uh, certainly that feature tied to it that I can make changes to. Let's take a look at the original geometry. If I was to select it, remember this was a profile. It was extruded. There was a cut placed on it. Think of that more as something maybe prior to prior to uh, the MicroStation Connect edition. And now I need to change that. I want to get rid of maybe I want to get rid of both of the shoulders that are there. Well, good luck to me because I can click on this all day and I really can't get rid of them. What do I have to do? I need to redraw the profile and extrude it out. Basically, I have to recreate my geometry. A lot more work on the left side. Pretty easy on the right side. And we can take it to another, the, the next step of this, which is to talk about how we can apply variables to the geometry. So if we take a look at the middle geometry that's here, it looks very similar, right? You got the two fillets that are up here, okay? but these fillets are being driven through a variable. There's a variable called shoulder, and I decide, all right, that needs to be 0.25, or maybe it needs to be changed to zero. Let's just get rid of it. So here and here, same basic geometry, but this was drawn with the shoulders kind of in mind that they could be independent of one another. This was drawn so they're driven by a variable, which is probably the easiest to make changes to. And then lastly, what you see on the left-hand side, a lot more difficult to make changes to. Okay. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.